Welcome back to Decked Out. On today's episode, we are joined by Zbex and Dana Fisher for what is my favorite episode of the entire year, our Halloween-themed episode. Each player is dressed up just like their commander. As always, thank you to our sponsors, Tales of Adventure, Moxfield, and Ultimate Guard, but more on them later in the video. All right, that's enough from us for now. Let's go ahead and get spooky and check out these commanders. Hi, I'm Dana Fisher, and you can find me on multiple platforms as Dana Fisher NTG, as well as I stream on Twitch with my dad on our family Twitch channel, Fisher Magic. Today, I am playing Chandra Fire of Keladish, which looks to play as many Chandras as possible and burn my opponents to the ground. <laughs> Hi, I'm Zbex, a professional cosplayer and trading card game personality, and today I've descended down from the heavens as an angel to play a deck of angels led by Giada, Font of Hope, because every angel deserves a halo. I'm going to be convincing all of my opponents to do the right thing. I am the wisest man alive, for I know one thing, and that is that I know nothing. And that is rule zero. I'm going to be playing Socrates, Athenian teacher, and probably like the real Socrates, he's a nice guy that gets a little annoying. I can convert anybody's attack into card draw for both the attacker and the defender, and so we're going to leverage that into damage somehow? Trust me, it'll work. Hello, I'm Velma, and today I am playing my in-universe character, Sophia Dog Detective. This deck is all about investigating, and that's great, because that's exactly what we're going to be doing at the table. We're going to be investigating our opponents to see who the culprit is, and then kill them. Spooky season is officially here, and while some of you might be feeling too old to trick, you are certainly never too old to treat yourself. And thanks to our sponsor, TOA, I know that you will find exactly the best deal for you and you can scout out all the singles and sealed product that you could need. Tales of Adventure has all different printings from the most basic versions of cards all the way up through the most fabulous and sparkly versions. So make sure you guys use the link down below in the description and our code decked out at checkout to get 5% off. And I know you'll find it down below in the description. All right, well now it's time to play this Halloween game. Welcome gang, let's see who goes first. Nine? I have a one. I also 17. have a one. <laughs> okay, I would like to start off by playing the most pretty galaxy planes and pass. It's just like up in the sky where I am. Aren't, don't, don't they grind you up for like your insides or something and that's how they save the universe? No, today I am wearing the halo as it is a substance that can be used in many ways. Well, I will play also this Galaxy Planes, but not foiled and pass. Well, then you're losing. That, that is that is a fact. Uh, let's go Command Tower, and my turn one play is Birds of Paradise. I get to make a little mana with my 01 flyer. I'll pass. I'm going to play a Galaxy Non-Foil Mountain and pass. Okay, Planes into... Pearl Medallion, white spells I cast cost one less. If you've played Giada, you probably always play her on turn two, but by playing Pearl Medallion now, I'm going to be able to cast two angels for a discount on turn three. Pass. Okay, well, I'm gonna play a Nimbus Maze and pay two. Enjoy, everyone. It's a Howling Mine. At the beginning of each player's draw step, if Howling Mine is untapped, that player draws an additional card. Ooh. Knowledge is power. That's what Socrates says. Pass the turn. Okay, I get the first benefit from this. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna play a Sea of Clouds for turn. And then I'll pay three for Morska, Undersea Sleuth. A two, three that says I have no maximum hand size. And at the beginning of my upkeep, I get to investigate. And whenever I draw my second card for each turn, I get to put two plus one plus one counters onto Morska. Uh, that'll be it, I'll pass. I will play Shatter Skull Smashing. Go ahead. 
land for turn and let's get our commander out there. Giada, Font of Hope. She's a 2-2 legendary creature angel with flying and vigilance. Each other angel I control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel I already control. And I can also tap her to add a white mana, spend this mana only to cast an angel spell. For two, I'll play Metropolis Reformer with the discount. This angel is a 2-3 with flying and vigilance, and I now have hexproof. Whenever this angel is dealt damage, I gain that much life. And since I control Giada, Metropolis Reformer is going to enter with a plus one plus one counter on it since I control one angel. Pass turn. I'll play a Mistgate Pathway, and then I'm going to cast my commander, Socrates, Athenian teacher, 0-4 with defender, has hexproof as long as it's untapped, and the Socratic dialogue, I can tap, and it, until end of turn, target creature gains. If this creature would deal combat damage to a player, prevent that damage, this creature's controller and that player each draw half that many cards rounded down. Let's not fight, let's just talk it out. I'll pass the turn. Untap and I get to investigate, and I'll get to draw two with the Howling Mine, which will put an extra two counters onto Morska. All right, I'm going to shock in a Temple Garden. Now it's time to investigate this mystery. So we're gonna pay four for the Ethereal Investigator, a two, three flyer that says, when it enters, I get to investigate X times where X is the number of opponents I have. And whenever I draw my second card each turn, I get to create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature with flying. I have three opponents, and that'll put me to four total clues. Veggie, I'm going to attack you for four. Why would you do this? Because Dana played a tap land and said go. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to trade for that. So that leaves you. Uh, and that'll do it. I'll pass. I will play a mountain, and I will play Artist's Talent. It is a class enchantment. Whenever I cast a non-creature spell, I may discard a card. If I do, draw a card. And then I can level it up for three mana. Non-creature spells I cast cost one less. I can level it up for three more mana to its final level. And that says, if a source I control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage, plus two instead. And I will pass the turn. I'm off to an unusually slow start for what Red typically wants to do, but I'm hoping that my opponents will play out a bunch of creatures and ignore me as a threat, because we all know there's always things that can deal with a board full of creatures. Before I play anything, I just want to go to combat. I'm gonna send three over to Nerd Girl and two commander damage over to Veggie. I've got no blocks. I can't block it. Just a little bit of angel love for everybody. Uh, and then using Giada and Pearl Medallion discount, I will cast Herald of War. It's a three, three flying angel. And whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Angel spells and human spells I cast cost one less to cast for each plus one, plus one counter on Herald of War. And I will get to put two plus one, plus one counters on it for each angel I already control. So now Herald of War is a five, five, and I'll pass the turn. I will tap two for the Argent Deus. It enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. And whenever two or more creatures attack, I put another counter on it. I can pay two and remove two oil counters from it to exile another target non-land permanent, but its controller draws two cards. So it's nice. Uh, that is all that I have for this turn. I will pass. Okay. On my upkeep, I'll get another clue. I'll get to draw two from the Howling Mine which will trigger my ethereal investigator, giving me a flying spirit. And I'll also get an additional two counters on Morska. <laughs> Veggie is really helping with my investigation. My ethereal investigator is getting to make a bunch of spirits because of Veggie's howling mine. Is he really helping me with my investigation or is he trying to throw me off his case? <laughs> I think it's time to go ahead and just play my commander as well. We're gonna play 
Sophia Dogged Detective. She's a 3-4 that says when she enters, I get to add a tiny legendary dog to the board. He's a 2-2. Two, two. I can also pay one, sacrifice an artifact token to put a plus one, plus one counter on each dog that I control. And whenever a dog I control deals combat damage to a player, I get to create a food and investigate. I am the most fearful of Zbex, So I think Morska is gonna come across the table for six damage, my friend. I will take six okay. commander damage. Now that I've attacked Zbex, I think I have ruled out that the crime was committed in the kitchen. So I'll play that tapped and pass the turn. I will pay four to cast Chain Reaction. Chain Reaction deals X damage to each creature where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Whoa. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, five. That's all of it. No. Yeah. That's a board clear. So that would be 10 damage to each creature. Ooh. And that will trigger my artist talent. When I cast a non-creature spell, I may discard a card to draw a card. In response, I've got this two blue mana open. I'm just gonna activate the Argentaeus uh, and exile my own Socrates so that I draw two cards. <laughs> but that's it, we can, we can board wipe. Yeah, so I'll just pass. Jeez, I can't believe that board wipe. I was gonna play 11 mana worth of angels on my next turn. I need to rebuild my mana ramp. So let's get Archaeomancer's map into play. It's an artifact. I can search my library for two basic planes, put them into my hand and shuffle. But more importantly, whenever a land enters battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player controls more lands than you, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. And I will play a land for the turn. And let's keep ramping. We got Arcane Signet. And then I'm gonna pass. And I'm gonna have to discard a card. It's gonna be Jackdaw Savior. Now we're talking. I'll play this beautiful island. I uh, bet you your land comes in, so I get one in two. And tap five for the Council of Four to zero eight. Whenever a player draws their second card each turn, I draw a card. Whenever a player casts their second spell during their turn, I make a 2-2 knight. Nothing bad could happen between Socrates and a council. Finally, I've got to pay off for all of this card draw that I'm dealing out, but they don't even know that it's just the setup for an even bigger payout. So it's kind of nice how that works. I will pass the turn and discard this planes. Okay. I will draw two. And then, since you've drawn two cards, I will draw a card. I'm gonna pay three for a Forensic Gadgeteer. A two, three that says whenever I cast an artifact spell, I get to investigate. I can also activate the abilities of artifacts I control with one less colorless mana. Can't reduce it less than one. I also think we can safely say that the crime has not happened in the conservatory. So we'll play that intact and I'll pass to Dana. I will draw two cards because of the Howling Mine. Oh, thanks, I'll draw a card. Sure you will, sure you will. <laughs> I will play a mountain, and I will tap five for Throne of Eldraine. As Throne of Eldraine enters the battlefield, choose a color, red, and I can tap to add four mana of the chosen color, spend this mana only to cast monocolored spells of that color. And then I can spend three mana and tap it to draw two cards, spend only mana of the chosen color to activate this ability. When I cast Throne of Eldraine, it is a non-creature spell. So Artist's Talent will trigger, and I will discard Rings of Bright Hearth and draw a card. And then I will tap Throne of Eldraine for four red mana, and I will use three of it to cast my commander, Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh. Whenever I cast a red spell, untap Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh. And then I can tap it to deal one damage to target player. If Chandra has dealt three or more damage this turn, exile her, then return her to the battlefield, transformed under her owner's control. I have one remaining red mana, so I am going to play Modern All-Star, Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. Whenever Ragavan deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and exile the top card of that player's library until end of turn. You may cast that card. 
And you have cast two spells this turn, so I will get a 2-2 White Knight. You're welcome. Canonical friends, Chandra and Socrates. Yeah, it's it's in one of the old novels. Mm, I don't know. I don't think Chandra would be friends with someone who plays blue. But uh, also a, a blue player that is drawing you a bunch of cards. All I can do is try to put out the fires among our players and promote peace. I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> and with that, I will pass the turn. Draw for turn, draw for Howling Mine. Oh look, I'll draw a card. To start off, I need to replay my commander. I still have the discount from Pearl Medallion, but two commander tax. Tapping four, I'll play Lyra Dawnbringer. She's a 5-5 five, five legendary angel with flying first strike and lifelink. Other angels I control get plus one, plus one and have lifelink. This is one of my favorite angels that was printed in Dominaria. And lifelink for everything? Oh, it's gonna be a good time. And Giada will trigger. Lyra Dawnbringer will get one counter since I control one other angel. Huh. Ugh. It would have been really cool with all of my other angels that were out before, getting them all lifelink, mm. and I would have played her for two. This is, this is getting scary. Well, luckily, there are no more angels left in the deck. Nothing I just to wanted to keep it spooky. <laughs> Pass. Um, I believe that you have cast two spells in that turn. It's facts. I'm gonna make a knight. I will not deny you your knighthood. I'll start things off with, oh, I am a player. Whenever a player draws their second card during their turn, I draw a card. That's me, I will draw a card. I'm gonna play a soul ring, and then I'm going to, let's see, use one of that and one more to play a folio of fancies. Nobody has a maximum hand size. Huh. I can pay XX and tap to have each player draw X cards, or I can pay three and tap. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of the library into the graveyard. I love all this knowledge you're giving us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more than you can handle. I feel so enlightened. Right? Uh, and that is my second spell, which I guess gives me another one of these knights. Gross. I'm gonna use the last mana floating plus these four for a Psychosis Crawler. It's power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in my hand. And whenever I draw a card, each opponent loses one life. I'll go to combat and I will send two knights at Dana. I will take the four damage. Exactly as I planned. <laughs> and then I will pass the turn. All right and I'll get an oil counter on Argentaeus. I will draw two from the Howling Mine and Veggie will get to draw as well. That's great, and everyone will lose a life. Oh no. Maybe the best kind of removal is player removal. How many flyers do you have? Great. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pay four for a 500 year diary. It's a legendary artifact that says it comes into play tapped. It can tap for one blue mana for each clue I control. I can also pay two to sacrifice it and draw. So it's gonna come into play tapped. It will trigger the Forensic Gadgeteer, which will give me an additional clue. And, uh, and that's gonna be it for my turn. Unfortunately, I'll pass to Dana. I will draw one from Howling Mine. I'll draw a card and everybody lose a life. I'm going to start by activating Chandra to deal one damage to Veggie. Yep. Excellent. And then I'm going to tap four for Oger Axenil, Deepest Might. It's a 4-4 four, four with Trample. If a red source I control would deal an amount of non-combat damage less than Oger Axenil's power to an opponent, that source deals damage equal to Oger's power instead. And then when it dies, return it to the battlefield tapped and transformed under its owner's control. Oger is really strong in my deck because a lot of my cards are dealing one or two damage to my opponents at a time. But Oger gets to double the, or even quadruple those to deal four damage instead of the one or two that I normally do, killing all my opponents all the much faster. That is a red spell, so that will trigger my Chandra oh, to untap. No. 
tap Chandra to deal one damage to Veggie, but because of Oger, it turns into four damage. <laughs> now Chandra has dealt uh, more than three damage to an opponent, so she will transform. Chandra can plus to deal two damage to target player. She can minus to deal two damage to target creature. And our ultimate deals six damage to each opponent. Each player dealt damage this way gets an emblem with at the beginning of your upkeep. This emblem deals three damage to you. So then I will plus one Chandra to deal two damage to Veggie, which because of Oja turns into four more damage. And then I'm going to activate Throne of Eldrain to make four red mana, and I will cast Delayed Blast Fireball. Delayed Blast Fireball deals two damage to each opponent and each creature they control. If this spell was cast from exile, which it wasn't, it deals five damage to each opponent and each creature they control instead. Great, okay, great. I love that, Dana. <laughs> and it is a non-creature spell, so I will discard a card to draw a card. So my creature will live and I'll take four. Well, I'll make a 2-2 knight because you cast your second spell and then it'll die immediately. And thanks to Lyra's pump, all of my creatures live, but I also take four. And then I think this Ragavan is just going to hang back and I will pass the turn. Great job. Okay. What just happened? <laughs> We didn't like taking damage, so we hired the damage enforcer, because I wouldn't do that. I'm too, I'm too nice with my head in the clouds. Well, don't you have some cards to draw? I do, I have two cards to draw. <laughs> one draw for my card. turn, one for Howling Mine. You're welcome. Everyone take uh, damage. Lose one life. For three, Fire Main Commando, a 4-3 Angel Soldier with flying. Whenever I attack with two or more creatures, draw a card. And whenever another player attacks with two or more creatures, they draw a card if none of those creatures attacked me. Uh, Fire Main Commando will enter with two plus one plus one counters since I control two angels. Hear me out, there is a Socratic method to my madness. There are now two big threats to the table and Dana and Nerd Girl are going to have to figure out whether they can deal with both of them at the same time or have them go head to head. And I'm really hoping that they decide on the latter. Okay, now let's move to combat. I will declare Giada as an attacker at Veggie and Lyra Dawnbringer as an attacker at Veggie. Since I attacked with two creatures, I get to draw a card from Fire Main Commando. Okay, well I also get to put a counter on Argentaeus, but I can't do anything about flyers, so I'm taking some damage. Good, keep that oil off of my feathers. Looks like nine. a total of nine. Ooh, one, two, three commander damage, and one, two, three, four, five, six regular damage. I'll gain nine. For... Five, I will cast Valkyrie Harbinger. It's a four five angel cleric with flying and lifelink. At the beginning of each end step, if I gained four or more life this turn, create a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance. That is your second spell, I'll make a knight. I'm gonna have a Giada trigger for Valkyrie coming in. So it's gonna have three plus one plus one counters. It's gonna be a big angel. That feels pretty good. I will pass the turn, and at the end of my turn, I'm gonna make a 4-4 angel creature token. <laughs> this one's so cute. Great, pass turn. She had a trigger. Oh, it's an angel! It's an angel! <laughs> it's an angel! <laughs> Thanks, okay. <laughs> this little angel that came in from my lifelink trigger is also going to get four plus one plus one counters. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Pass. Well, I'll be over here drawing cards, I guess. <laughs> I will draw two cards, and the Council of Four will draw me an additional card. Everyone take three. Three? I drew three cards. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. I thought I'm supposed to burn people out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can you can help. Don't worry, he gets burned in the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
going to start by paying two for Prof's Eidetic Memory. When it enters the battlefield, I'll draw a card. I have no maximum hand size, again. And at the beginning of combat on my turn, if I've drawn more than one card this turn, I put counters on target creature equal to the number I've drawn minus one. So I'll draw a card. And everyone lose a life. And here's the problem that I'm going to cause for you all. Oh boy. Uh-oh. I'm going to pay my remaining seven mana for Seagate Restoration. <laughs> so you're going to draw a billion? I'm going to draw cards equal to the number of cards in my hand plus one, and I have no max hand size for the rest of the game in addition to my no max hand size and my no max hand size. I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen cards in my hand. I'm going to draw thirteen. Fourteen. I'm going to draw fourteen. Everyone, please take fourteen. Uh huh. I was feeling really good about my life total, but Veggie making me take fourteen damage? Jinkies, that's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. But you're tapped 14. out now. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm super tapped out now. So we just kill him. I'm also worried about the angels. I'm worried about you too now that I'm a, I was not too worried about you, but now that I'm a 10, I am worried yeah. about you. <laughs> uh, that is my second spell, so I will make a second knight. I'm sure that that will protect me. I will move to combat. I've drawn 17 cards, so I will put 17 counters on a creature I control. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I, these, the Council of Four, I, I feel like they deserve it after everything that they've done. 17 counters, making them a 1725. Uh, I will send my 1725 Council of Four at Zbex. I'm gonna block with my 8899 nine. Nine, nine flying lifelink vigilant angel token. They're all lifelink? We have yeah, Lyra, Lyra Dawnbringer. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to gain some life before Chandra's turn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm good to go to damage. It'll just kill it. That's fine. I, I will gain nine life. Oh no. All right. Good luck, everybody. Pass the turn. At the beginning of each end step, if I gained four more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance from Giada. I'm going to put four plus one plus one counters on it. Oh. Dana. Yeah. We have to team up. <laughs> yes. I can't survive either of them. Yeah. I need, I, I need to burn somebody out. Can you burn Veggie out? I can do- Yes, I, I, I can kill Veggie. I mean, if you keep me alive, I will kill a veggie before it gets to his turn. But we we can't. Well, that's the conundrum that you have to decide. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and we also know that Zbex has Path to Exile in hand. What? There is <laughs> not one white mana open for some reason? Or Swords to Plow Shores. It's or one of the two. How dare you reveal all of my secrets as if they are just written in the sky. Uh, so I'll go ahead and draw two from the Howling Mine. Okay, I will draw one and everyone please lose a life. Ouch. I'll go ahead and tap my 500 year diary for seven mana for my seven clues. And I'm gonna cast Pangle Trove Kelp, a six six with ward two. It says at the beginning of each combat, my other clues become 6-6 six, six plants in addition to their other types. When I cast an artifact spell, my gadgeteer will make me another clue. All right, uh, I think Veggie, I can't do enough damage to Zbex, so I'm just gonna go and uh, swing at Veggie with 6-6-6 uh, six, six, six plant creature tokens. Swords? No. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will block three of them. The one that Veggie blocks, I will pay one to sacrifice it and draw. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> 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 and then I will hope that Dana can save us. I'm not sure. Um, I can try. 
I'm gonna start by plus one Chandra to deal two damage to you, Z-Bex, but it will turn into four with the Ogre. Gee, I wish I had that hexproof angel still. And then I will tap two to cast Oath of Chandra. When Oath of Chandra enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target creature and opponent controls. At the beginning of each end step, if a planeswalker entered the battlefield under my control this turn, Oath of Chandra deals two damage to each opponent. Um, it is a non-creature spell, so it will trigger my artist's talent, and I will discard a card and draw a card. And Oath of Chandra will deal three damage to Giada. In response to Giada being targeted for one white with the Pearl Medallion discount, I'm gonna play And They Shall Know No Fear. It's an instant, and I'm gonna choose a creature type, angels, and creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus zero oh, and gain indestructible until end of turn. I'm going to respond to that. Yes. Ooh. I had to see if you had it. I will cast Wild Magic Surge. Destroy target permanent and opponent controls. Its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a permanent card that shares a card type with that permanent. They put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. That is a non-creature spell, so artist's talent will trigger. I think I just target Lyra here. You're destroying Lyra, and she's not indestructible yet, but I get to do the thing, and it's flip until I reveal an angel? A uh, creature. creature. Well, there's the sword, so you know I don't have it in my hand. <gasps> oh, oh, a Chroma, Angel of Wrath, and the rest of the cards go on the bottom in a random order. So a Chroma, Angel of Wrath, is a legendary creature angel with flying, first strike, trample, haste, protection from black, protection from red, and attacking doesn't cause a Chroma to tap. Uh-huh. And because Giada is still around before the Oath of Chandra has resolved, those are still on the stack. I've got one, two, three, four counters going on a chroma equal to number of angels I already had in control. Okay, my spell resolves, Oath of Chandra resolves, Giada is indestructible. I will then tap Throne of Eldraine for four mana. I will cast Chandra Pyromaster. Chandra can plus to deal one damage to target player and one damage to up to one target creature that player controls. That creature cannot block this turn. I can zero to exile the top card of my library and play it this turn. And then minus seven, exile the top 10 cards of my library. Choose an instant or sorcery called exile this way and copy it three times. You may cast the copies without paying their mana costs. That is a non-creature spell. So I will discard a card to draw a card. And then I will plus one to deal four damage to you, z -Bex. And I will play a Valakut as my land for turn. One of our mountain enters the battlefield under my control. If I have five other mountains, Valakut deals three damage to any target. I will move to my end step. And a Planeswalker has entered the battlefield under my control. So each opponent will take two damage, but with Ogre, it'll be four damage. Okay, two damage, which is four. You have no flyers? You have no flyers? Nope. Nope. Moving to combat. Okay. Yep. I'm going to send Fire Main Commando <laughs> at Nerd Girl and the rest of my angels at Dana. Chroma has vigilance. When I attack with two or more creatures, I get a draw card. All right, so I have no blocks. I have no blocks. I'm really surprised that Zbex chose to attack me with only one creature. I thought it was pretty clear that I had at least one answer, but if she's gonna give me one more turn to try to solve this case, I'm gonna take it. 
uh, I will go ahead and uh, cast Beast Within and destroy a permanent. Its controller puts a 3-3 green beast token onto the battlefield, and uh, that'll be the creature that's attacking me. Oh, you want one more go, huh? I mean, <laughs> if you're gonna give me the option, I'm gonna try to take it. All right, that creature's not that important to me. I'll let you live another turn. Beast. It's destroyed. And I get a beast. Sorry, Dana. And then I will die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with the damage that does get through to Dana, I have this creature that has lifelink. So it, I'm gonna gain seven life. Okay. I found out where it happened. <gasps> oh no. It was in the sanctuary. <laughs> the Sanctuary Warden is an angel soldier with flying. It's a 5-5, five, five, and when it enters the battlefield, it comes in with two shield counters on it. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, I may remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker I control. If I do, draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. I would love to remove a counter from this giant token. Also, when this enters, I'm gonna have a Giada trigger. So again, I'm gonna get four counters on Sanctuary Warden. Why not? For two, I will cast Wojek Investigator. It's a two, four angel detective. You're not the only one solving the mystery. It's got flying and vigilance. At the beginning of my upkeep, investigate once for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. And being an angel, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five counters on Wojek Investigator. Let's move to my end step and make an angel token with flying and vigilance. So you have seven blockers. And this one's gonna enter with six plus one plus one <laughs> counters on it. We're gonna go out in a blaze of glory and we're gonna overload Rise and Shine, which is going to make each of my non-creature artifacts and turn them into zero, zero artifacts with four plus four plus four counters onto them. And then I get to go to combat, which will activate the Tangle Trove Kelp, which will turn all of them into base power toughness 6-6, six, six, making all seven of them 10-10s. Ten Surely that would be enough, right? It's so close. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go to combat and we're gonna send everything to z -backs. All right, I'm going to assign all six uh, sorry, oh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven blockers. So all seven blockers will go under the 10 tens, I assume, and you'll take eight damage. Okay, so I'm going down to 13. Okay. And all of my creatures that blocked, well, a chroma that blocked has first strike, so you're actually gonna lose one of them because she's a 10 10. Mm. Yep, okay. And I'll remove a shield Ooh. token off of Sanctuary Warden. Oh man. All right, and then I will just play a Noble Hierarch. It's Dead. an 01 Exalted that can't block your stuff, and uh, I'll pass the turn. Land for turn, just in case, because I did lose some of my power, I wanna make sure I'm gonna get in. I'm tapped out this time. I know, but I wanna show off one of the new cards from Bloombro. It's Patchwork Banner. I'm gonna choose creature type Angel so that my angels get plus one, plus one. Ha <laughs> ha! And then I'll move to combat and I will attack with everybody. More than five, dead. Good game. Good game. Happy Halloween. Good game. Happy Halloween. Good game. Good game. Which font is the font of hope? Like. Definitely not Perpetua. That's more up your alley. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with a standard Ariel. It's in the sky. Ah, that's a good answer. <laughs> Fairies did me dirty last Halloween, so this year I was enlightened and picked the more divine creature type with wings and flew all the way to victory. Don't forget to support your favorite commander show by doing something you were going to do anyway, and that's buy Magic Singles. And you can do so by using our sponsor, TOA.
It really is that easy. And Tales of Adventure has a wide selection of singles from the most basic printings all the way through the most premium versions. And they've also started stocking sealed product now, so you don't need to go anywhere else for anything magic. And you get 5% off your entire order when you use code DECKDOWN at checkout. And you should know by now, the, the link is down in the description, right there. You're gonna Cyclonic Rift? Oh no. Okay. How dare you accuse me of a Cyclonic Rift? I would <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, play back the tape. We need every clip of Veggie casting a Cyclonic Rift. I can think of Find one. Find them. I can Find think them. of one for sure. In the Mia game when you played the Patron deck. Oh, it, that that doesn't count. It, it was given to me. Uh-huh. I, I was you holding it for a friend. It. That's true. You played much <laughs> jankier cards. Why would I ever assume such a thing? Right. Overall, I think this game turned out really well. Everybody got to show off a little bit what their deck was about. Nerd Girl was making a ton of clues, Veggie was drawing so many cards, and Zebex was making so many large flying and life flanking angels, while I was be able to deal a bunch of damage to all my opponents. If you're building decks and you're not using Moxfield, then I mox feel bad for you. It just is the best tool for organizing, customizing, and collaborating on all of your decks. In fact, it's the only way that our team can keep up with building sometimes over 20 decks per month. And it's the way that we can share our deck lists with you in a nice, easy format. You can always support the show too, just by following us on Moxfield, where you can find every deck that's ever been on the show. Vegetees? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's like a, that's like what they eat in uh, Australia, right? <laughs> Jinkies, that was a lot of life gain. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader in TCG accessories. And Ultimate Guard products are the way that all three of us on the Decked Out team are able to organize, protect, and display our collections. And they're the best way to show off all of our cards on camera for you. So make sure you use the link down below in the description to support the show and pick yourself up some amazing upgrades. Socrates was knighted, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Queen, Queen Elizabeth. I'll draw two cards for the Howling Mine. In Assassin's Creed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I proposed my win to the table and they vetoed it and said, here, drink this hemlock. I cannot complain about a game where I draw that many cards and drain the table out as well. But to be honest, I'm more of a Play-Doh guy. It tastes delicious. We'd like to thank our patrons. Without your support, we would have never been able to get this fun cosplay episode together. That's right. It's thanks to patrons like you, Phineas, that we're able to keep this show weekly, and that means the world and the moon to us. And if you're not already a part of the show, you can join us by signing up for our Patreon and unlock exclusive perks, sign tokens, spell table games with us, even get us to play your deck here on the show. And of course, Finn, you can always support the channel by liking the video and subscribing. That's all we've got for you for today. Happy Halloween, and we'll see you next time on Decked, Decked Out. Out.